Praise the Lord. It's good to be here. Um, I'm humbled just to be part of Life Church, um, the flow of ministry and <clears throat> the confirmation you get uh, from the Word. It's good to see every one of you in fellowship. Amen. I won't be long, uh, but I do want to leave just a few thoughts that God has been dealing with me personally, and I hope it helps. Uh, I hope it we leave out of here uh, encouraged and uh, you take something away from it. But uh, before we go into scripture, uh, we'll visit a very familiar uh, Luke 22, and we'll start at verse 39. Uh, this setting is in the garden. Uh, I've even, I think, Elder uh, Laxmana Bishop and uh, Brother Kendrick, I, I know a person I've probably ministered on this uh, at least twice. But as the word continues to develop in prayer, uh, God just brings this setting back to my mind, and um, I can't leave it. So I just want to share this thought. Uh, we're going to start at verse 39, but no, let's just start there. And he came out and went as he went, uh, was wont, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Verse 41, And he was withdrawn from them about a, cast, a stone's cast, and, and kneeled down, and praying, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Before we continue, I just want to pause on that verse. Because me personally, I'm tired of praying and praying and praying, but doing mine own will at the end of the day, during the week. I come to church, and I find space and time to pray in the Holy Ghost throughout the week and my days, but yet I find my mind, my headspace, I saw some wonderful ministry, consumed with worldly things, and if I can truly say in my heart of hearts, is my, am I really consumed by the Holy Ghost and the things of God? I want your will to be done, Lord, fully and accomplished in my life. And if I'm going to do that, I must example the word, example how you prayed in this garden. And there's two types of um, prayers that are being um, prayed in this, in this setting, as we know. Let's continue reading. Verse 43. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Amen. This is where you get re-strengthened in prayer. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose up from prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The temptation... They were probably thinking, Lord, what is what temptation are you talking about? But little did they know that moments later, there was a band of men that approached. They were already on their way in pursuit to arrest Christ. But Christ, being God himself, knew that they were coming. And he said, if thou, in verse 42, he said, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And he was processing what in the next few days would happen before he would approach Herod and be scourged and be beaten and be cursed. All of these things were being processed. But his disciples were there saying, what temptation are you talking about, Lord? Let's continue reading. And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, here it is. And he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto him to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? When they which were about him saw what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? The disciples purchased a couple of swords the night prior. And here in this situation, they have all the right to, to stand up for the Messiah. Because beforehand, a couple of days before this, Peter made the confession in front of his brethren. They know that Christ, it is God that dwells in the flesh before them. So they tried valiantly 
They could have done right. They could have justified everything to smite. And Jesus would have escaped like he did before and times passed away just for a season. But the Lord knew that there was something bigger on the line. He had to die for the sins of the world, for them and for us. His eyes were set beyond just the Jews and Jerusalem. But he was concerned about the earth, reconciling the world unto himself. Lord, not thine will, not mine will, but let thine will be done, Father. There is a dimension, there is a prayer life, there is a a secret place. There is the chambers, Father, that you want us to enter into and stay there. Father, for there is much work to be done in these next few hours, in these next few days that are left on the earth before you come back. Lord, as you tarry. I know that there are some, you, are, you know your chambers, you know your secret places, and I, I commend you for that. I look up to you. You encourage me as I get fed from your ministry, and I get to know and discern that there is a prayer life behind a brother, behind a sister. But the Lord wants all of us to partake in that secret place, for there is much work to be done in your life. Because it is beyond just you and your family. But the Lord piercing through the situation. He was looking at the world. As you must look past beyond yourself. And look to others. Because there is much more on the line. Amen. Verse 50. And one of them smote the servant of the high priest. And cut off his ear. In uh, the book of John, we know that it's Peter. Uh, And Jesus answered and said, Suffered ye thus far? And he touched his ear and healed him. Let me pause there for just a moment. We're so, the Lord gave this to me, we're so quick to uh, touch the little things. There were high priests, there were captains there, but Peter aims just for a lowly servant. Maybe he could have caught just a you know, few charges, not maybe one charge. But nonetheless, it's first degree assault or attempted murder. But yet he was able to walk away scot-free. That's because the Lord said that none of these shall ye take. I thank God for the Lord's grace to overlook some of my shortcomings when I react in my flesh and I'm able to justify my situation. Well, this is for the Lord's work. Hiya. I thank God that he's so rich of mercy and he's so full of grace for this sinner For this man, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, but I fall short. And when I do, I thank God for him to let me know that, Elder Elder Lax, when you ministered on this, that his mercies renew every morning. I can get back and say, Lord, I haven't prayed sweats and droplets of blood today. I fell asleep as disciples and my eyes grew weary. But today, Lord, yeah, that was yesterday. Let me look forward. And I thank God for the instant when he can just say, okay. Today's a new day. Get on your knees and pray. Talk to me. Commune with me because there's much more. And I want to bring you back into right alignment. He restored the servant's ear. Amen. I want to move forward from this setting. In verse 46, he says, why sleep ye? Rise and pray. I feel the Holy Ghost. Maybe this is just to me. But I know that it's more. I know there are people in here that are trying their best to develop a a prayer life. And they're tired of surface level praying as some of the disciples did in this garden. 
but they want to go deeper, deep. The Holy Ghost is calling out to you in the deep places. And there's so much reward in here besides just the souls that are waiting on the other side. But you see, there's no denying of Christ in these levels of prayer, as Peter did. There's no temptation. He's saying, "Be lest ye enter in temptation. Temptation from what? From giving up, Mom. But if I have a prayer life and I'm truly communing with him, whatever awaits tomorrow on the next day, I am prepared spiritually to say, I'm going to go forward. Lord, let your cup be poured out. Let me partake in what you emotion, what, what you felt and endured on this earth. If it is your will and my reward is in heaven, Lord, let it be so. It says in the book of John, and I think in, even in Luke, that there is an angel that visited him during his prayer. You ever feel the brush of angels' wings in a fiery prayer place? I know for sure Saturday morning you can feel a different shift in, 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 our, in your spirit if you're praying, even here at the altar, I believe, even by tonight. Even, even by tonight, you can feel the brush of angels' wings. But there are different dimensions, and I'm not here to minister. I don't have it figured out. I'm not claiming to be. But I tell you that God is stirring up my spirit personally to go further. God has been good in my life. I've, this is 10 years. I'm a decade in now. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The day that Brother Nino witnessed to me. A little over 10 years. And I thank God for what he's done. But I'm telling you, this is not yet. This is not, yet, this is not where I'm supposed to stay. There is much more, and I, I, the Holy Ghost is pushing me, and I hope he's challenging you and pushing you, saying that you shouldn't be satisfied where you are because there are so much more things that await. And if I'm struggling, then I have to get to a place and a posture where I can receive manna under the juniper tree as Elijah. I tell you, there is a place in prayer where you can have so much authority coming out that you can stand on a mountain in front of prophets of the, I'm talking about priests and for uh, Jezebel, the, the opposition, the enemy, people that have given themselves over to witchcraft. And witchcraft does work. When people will avail themselves and open up their hearts, open up their eyes to, to things that are forbidden and un, that are not supposed to be seen by the man's eyes, they entertain things and spirits can take over them and they have little bits of power. You see this in, ex, uh, in Exodus with Janus and Jambri. They almost mimicked Moses' uh, Aaron's rod and turning water into blood, but the, definitely not on a grand scale as the river. It's limited, yes, but I'm telling you, when, El when the prophets cried out and they began to cut themselves on top of the mounts, there, everything was silenced. I believe Elijah's prayer life subdued all of the spirits on that mountain. And God gave him so much favor that even a spirit could not cry out. There was no fire. But when Elijah prayed, fire fell down. And I believe it. When you walk into your workplace, all the spirits must be subject unto the Holy Ghost. If you've got a prayer life. When you enter into downtown Tacoma and things begin to stir up. Because of your prayer life. But with surface level praying. If Elijah just stayed at the surface. Who knows what could have happened. There, there, maybe fire could have just kindled just a little bit in their sacrifice. Because they did have power. I'm not glorifying the other type of power. I know greater is he who is in us, the Holy Ghost residing. It trumps all things. I know that. But I'm just saying, imagine the, there was a shift because there was a turn in that, in that moment, in that, in that setting. People, prophets came back unto God. Imagine if they would have just seen a little bit of spark. Who knows? I'm not adding on to the word, but this is for you. This is just where the, my mind is going right now. 
He was subject to like passion just as us, but he prayed earnestly as Christ prayed earnestly in the garden. Teach us how to pray. I know the Lord's prayer is there for an outline, but I feel the Holy Ghost pushing us, pushing me to deeper places where there is authority on our lives as life church, not just surface and getting through the motions where I'm not seeing the visitation of angels and nothing is happening in my household or in my family or in my church, in my circle. But I want to see the manifestation of the work of God, the miracles of God, Brother Kendrick. I know that he's pushing every single individual to a place, Brother Brad. When I grow weary and I grow sleepy, Lord, give me the strength to push forward in that moment. Personally, he's been telling me to wake up in the middle of the night. In these nighttime hours with so much activity going on that I cannot even see. I probably shouldn't even ask to see it. But I just know the feeling of being awoke in the middle of the night, Bishop. And how many times do I just slumber? My work shift has been pushed to an earlier start time. I work at 5. I used to start at 6. Now I start at 5. Lord, help this vessel to even arise in those earlier, earlier hours for me. Challenge me and push me. And I'm not perfect, church. There's been many times where I hit snooze. I set the alarm earlier minutes before I can get out to go to work. And I look over and I see my son and my wife. And I, Lord, this is, I justify it. Lord, it's okay. I can just sit here and I'll pray for my son for a few minutes while he's sleeping. But I want to see. I love the people around me that I get to see in the day at my work. And I know the difference. I know the difference when I wake up in prayer and I enter into my workplace. My workplace, Austin, is just as worldly as yours. And I know the difference, Elder Laksamana, when I'm in prayer and I enter in why the attitudes of the people around me. The activity that develops throughout the day, the favor that comes along when I'm in prayer early in the hours. And I can tell the difference when I hit snooze and I walk in and I start to react the same as Peter. And I start cutting people with, their, with my words. Cutting their ears off in my flesh. The Lord is trying to push me and you to a different place. We can't remain the same on surface level praying, but really push to a place where I'm walking fully of the Holy Ghost. Amen, Bishop. Hallelujah.